All right. Uh, it is a very good day for Oscar Mike Radio. I'm s- Oscar Mike Radio has been about telling the stories of veterans who are trying to do something in their lives after the service, whether it's starting their own business, their own nonprofit, uh, reinventing themselves. That's one of the primary focuses of the podcast. I don't know if I'm love podcasting anymore because I'm so live now. And I'm in parts unknown, but I'm very pleased to be with Mr. Mark Holmes of Reaper uh, Detailing and Power Washing. Mark, welcome to number 163 of Oscar Mike Radio. It is very well behind. Absolutely. So behind me is my motorcycle. Uh, I call her Felicity. She has her own Facebook page. To say that I love her is an understatement. I, I adore her very much. And Mark, you're the first man to ever have your way with my woman (laughs) (laughs) well it's the truth it's the truth and and, and, you know mark mark does this for a lot of motorcycles and cars and you do houses too Mm -hmm. i do uh, houses decks uh, patio play pool patios so one of the things we start off with is you know how you got into this before we do i just want to give a big shout out to my sponsor joyce asac of asac realty you can uh, find out more at asacrealty.com. So, Mark, uh, like I do with all my guests, I'm kind of curious about your military service and how you did that. Can you kind of tell us about, you know, when and how you served in the military? Uh, yeah. At 17, I signed up uh, with the National Guard um, in Whitman, the 181st Engineer Company. Um, my father always told me it was either there or I was going somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I joined the uh, engineers in Whitman uh, back in uh, October 18, 1989 is when I signed my papers. So you remember that day like it was yesterday? I do. I do. I still remember going into the office and who I talked to and what the conversation was all about. And Well, how, how old were you at that time? 17. 17. So you're a 17-year-old kid either graduating, getting ready to graduate high school, and, and you felt strongly about this. I did. Uh, my whole family has served in the military okay. all the way up from uh, um, the first militia ever in Massachusetts. Get out. Oh. You guys go back that far. Yeah, I have a picture, actually, a panoramic picture that my father gave me in my room of the first militia ever in Massachusetts. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you carry on the family tradition mm-hmm. with your dad's encouragement. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like when you went in? What was serving like? Um. It was kind of scary when I, like, uh, we went through basic training at IT uh, when I graduated in 1990. Um, And then as soon as I graduated, came home, I think I was home for like maybe three, four months. And then we left for Desert Storm. Oh, wow. Now, I I missed Desert Storm 1. You're you're in this area, you're you're National Guardsmen, which they're not really supposed to deploy overseas, but that's what they did back then. What was it like going overseas? The first time was really, uh, didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of scary of like, hey, where are we going? What are we doing? You know, uh, we're a comm engineer, so, you know, we built roads and stuff like that, Air, airports. And, and it was hot. Extremely <laughs> hot. <laughs> That's the heat I'll never forget. <laughs> so it makes a hot, hot day here. People are wanting to complain about hot days here. It seemed like. Oh, this is, I keep telling people, this is not hot. So how many times were you deployed? Uh, I was deployed three times. Was each time back to Iraq or did you do any Afghanistan? No, I did um, all Iraq. All Iraq? One question I always ask guys I know who were deployed to Iraq is, do you think that we made a difference there? I believe so. Um, I don't know how much of a difference, you know, it, it, it all it's all in the future how much the difference makes. You right. know, it's like. What's, what's going to happen now after we're all gone and, you know, what are they going to follow through trying to help their people? Well, it was a proud time. You, you served your country and then you came home and did you, did you separate and decide to get out or what was, what was the details behind that? Um, I retired, oh. um, last year. All right. So you retire and, and I, I'm going to have this in one of my photos on the, uh, Oscar Mike radio blog post. He retired folks and tattooed his rank insignia on his leg. Yeah, I have to put retired on there. <laughs> well, 
if you notice, Mark, I don't have any tattoos because I, I grew to hate needles so much. I just didn't see the point. He's different than I am, folks. But you, you got out as a staff sergeant. Mm -hmm. um, you retired last year from the National Guard. Reserves, what, yep. Oh, reserves, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. And now you're, you're, you're cleaning everything. And that's really kind of where I want to focus on now. What, what kind of, you know, got you into this? Because this is a business you've been at, you've been growing. We met uh, at Veteran Owned, Veteran Operated in uh, Jonathan Gosselin's old place. And you're talking about growing your business. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people at our age wouldn't just drop everything they're doing and try to build a new business. What said, you know, I want to work for myself. What, what caused you to do that? Um, well, when I first started out, which was like four years ago, um, I was just doing bikes. And uh, I loved cleaning my bike. It gave me, like, it helped with my anxiety and everything else. So uh, it used to take me five to six hours to do my bike. And then I'm, I have it down to, like, an hour and a half, two hours now. Well, folks, he just cleaned Felicity. And, yes, what used to take me all day, which wasn't a bad time, he did in, like, an hour. It was absolutely and much better than I possibly could. So you start off with motorcycles, which which are complicated, right? What's they got small parts. So what's it like trying to get in there and clean it, you know, really well? Uh, it it used to be hard. Okay. And now I found out different tricks. <laughs> so practice does make perfect. That's right. And, and so you start off with bikes, which there's a ton of motorcycles in this part of the country. You know, what kind of led you to pursue cars and now houses? Um. I just like things clean. And I want to beautify or repify everything in the world. And and my my motorcycle, ladies and gentlemen, is reaperfied. Uh, but houses, mm -hmm. I would never think. Maybe it's just, I never thought of it of houses needing detail work. Yeah, um, all the algae that grows on the side of the house, and uh, it's usually on the non sun side that becomes green, and um, almost like the house across the street. <laughs> <laughs> He hasn't wanted to hire me yet. I keep trying to talk him into it. Well, he, he could use your services. <laughs> yes, he could. <laughs> I've done his roof. Okay. So you, you walk up to a house, though. I mean, is there any difference than doing a car or motorcycle? Or, or I guess what I'm trying to say is between a car, motorcycle, and house, and if you clean everything, in between, in, anything in between, what's that like? Or does each each thing mean a different set of challenges? Or? Some things do. Some houses are bigger you know, take a little bit more time. Right. Um, you know, I've done from roof down. I've just done the side of a house. And um, all cars are way different because some are worse than others. Um, and that's the challenge. Well, I tell you, my sister is in um, Texas. Well, not that one. I'll get in trouble for saying this. <laughs> well, one of my sister's cars looks like a, it's like, it's like an archaeological dig. Like there's different strata. Of, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've seen that. Okay, you've seen that. <laughs> like, how do you get all that stuff out, or can it be gotten out? Yeah, I have. I've um, I've had cars where it looks like they brought the beach into their car and dumped it in. <laughs> <laughs> like literally going down to Nantasket Beach and said, "Let's it, just shovel a couple of." Yeah, I was like taking a bucket and just shoving it in the back or in the front. And... <laughs> in fact, if you go on my Facebook, uh, there's pictures of different cars of like uh, different. Hey, and seeing is believing, folks, and, and I'm like watching some of these Facebook photos. Uh, I'll have the Facebook link in the blog post and everywhere. Uh, some of the before and after pictures are simply like, it can't be the same vehicle. It just can't, but it is. Yeah. What's it like watching your customer come up to you when they see their car or house or bike, bike especially? And you're like, man, that's a pretty darn good job, Mark. It, it's it's an amazing feeling. It makes you smile. And uh, most of the compliment I get is like, I didn't buy it this good looking. And it's like, well. <laughs> I didn't buy it this good looking. Right. Well, that's pretty cool. So every business owner I talk to has challenges. There's a good side of serving the customers, but there's also challenges. What's, what's challenging about doing this kind of work, especially – in New England where there isn't a lot of good sunny days to do stuff like this? Um, it's mostly just rain. Um, I've, d I've detailed cars in the winter. As long as it's above 36 degrees, I can detail the car. So let me get this straight. It's like February, January, and you're watching the thermometer, and if it's above 36, you're like, we're going? Yep. <laughs> I've done it in the snow before. 
You Not a heavy snow. snow, but like a little light flurry. What's the, what? Yeah. Since and it came out perfect. Most times when I think <laughs> of that, I'm thinking some guy has a has a big shop and he's inside and he's got his little you know hand warmers. You're you're, you're out in the wild doing this. Yeah. Most of the, yeah. I'm you know I in the future I hope to have a garage to do it. But yeah, I I can do it in the wild. So like Marines, I know your Army, I mean, or, or National Guard, but you, you're literally any climb in place. You can get your clean stuff. It's getting clean. Yep. As long as it's above, like, it doesn't freeze, we're good. <laughs> so it's just, it's snow doesn't bother you. Heat doesn't bother you. Uh, cold doesn't bother you. It's just uh, rain. And it was kind of uh, weird this morning. And, you know, we both got up and we're like, are we going to be able to do this? And then all of a sudden the skies cleared up, but it could rain tomorrow. I actually did a bike yesterday in the rain. But I had my canopies all set up so because it, it covers the whole bike. So anywhere, anytime you can do this. And what's it like working for yourself? A lot of veterans tell me the reason they, they want to do their own thing is because they had to take orders for so long. <laughs> uh, no, it's just, it's a feeling of accomplishment of, of starting something uh, from scratch. Uh, like I said, I started out with a, doing motorcycles with just a bucket and like a, a little tote of products. Um, and that's how you first started out. Well, if we can, I'll have some video clips in, in, in the, the video portion of this. It's not really a podcast anymore. But what was it like doing my bike? Because I thought I had my bike pretty well clean. And, folks, I did not. <laughs> it, it wasn't too, too bad. Um, you had some surface rust that's now gone, but that's it. Well, it shows me this 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 cloth, this towel, and he's like, here's your surface for us. And I'm like, oh my God, dude, I thought I had it. I thought I had like, I mean, I know there's, it's, it's an older motorcycle, but still it all came off in the paint. Like, and you're like, I use pledge on my motorcycle and you're saying, don't use a pledge. No, anymore. don't use pledge. <laughs> but it, I thought it worked. So what should I use instead of pledge? Um, there's a lot of spray waxes out there. You can use if you, you know, going on a ride. Um, I like Meguiar's a lot, uh, Lucas products I use. Um, different spray waxes work better on different paint. So what's next for Reaper? Uh, first of all, folks, I love his logo. I love the name. I love saying, I love when he's on Facebook or his other things, he's like, hey, I just Reaperfied this, and it really sticks out. It's, it's like he's the grim reaper of dirt destruction <laughs> and, and, and slow death to your car, and he takes it all away. Uh, it's like my bike just shed its skin. I mean, he took all the nastiness away. I think this, that's how I think of it, uh, of the reaper name. But it, it's just you have a cool logo. You have a cool idea of being this independent guy going around and doing this. And if I'd had a, a host somewhere, you could have come to write to me and, and did my motorcycle right in my yeah. park. Right on you. As long as you have a water source, that's all we require. I bring my own electricity if uh, for cars or the vacuum. And, and you'll see, you'll see some of the video clips. Um, Mark, you put a whole different meaning on the word blow dry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to spoil it for uh, people right now, but when you watch the video, uh, you're going to see that uh, it's a whole new um, twist on that whole concept. It's just really cool to see. And, you know, you're trying to do this and you're trying to grow your business and, you know, there's a lot of resources for veterans and there's a lot of help for veterans, but still at the end of the day, you got to get up and actually get the work done. You know, do you, do you still find enjoyment in, in doing that? I do. I mean, some mornings are painful to get up, you know, but I, I do. I just get up and move on with the day. Yeah. And you ride a motorcycle yourself, right? I do. What do you ride? I ride an 03 electric bike. Nice, nice. Oh, wait, excuse me. It's an 08 this one. 08, okay. <laughs> oh, wait. And all I need to do is take one look at that motorcycle, folks, and I'm like, okay, I've come to the right place. I've come to the right place. And it was, like I said, it was just cool seeing my motorcycle kind of, like I said, shed all its bad old skin and, and get um, beautified, reaperfied. Reaperfied. And what's next what are you trying to do next with your business and how can people connect with you uh the next step i want to do is, i mean I, I still want to keep on doing the what i'm doing uh have a garage and you know once the garage gets going i want to be able to hire uh, veterans 
that, uh, especially disabled veterans, because it's, it's hard for us to go out and get like really hard working labor jobs. Um, and sometimes it's long hours, but we, you know, it, it helps us, you know, who wants to clean, not someone who says, I can do it, I can do it, and they, they just don't really get into it. So we talked about, you know, your, your um, status before we, we started the podcast. And I think it's amazing that you've been able to take, you know, the challenges around that and, and do your own business. And certainly hiring veterans is a big, huge help. Did you ever, you know, get with your local VSO or other vet groups about yeah. what you do? I put on uh, mass hole vets a lot. Um, mass hole vets. Yeah, I put it on there a lot. Uh, I do it on my own site. I've asked around to different veteran agencies of, you know, hey, you know, especially when I have big jobs coming up, like I love like hiring people to do like a house, like my size house would take us like two hours to do instead of taking three hours to do by myself. And, and that's all important. And I think a lot of veterans want to go out there and want to contribute and they want to see their work, um, you, you know, kind of pay off the minute they do it. Yep. Right then and I've there. had people say, wow, I can't believe what I just did. Yeah, I know. Well, it's all about that, right? You mean, people? some people couldn't believe what you're doing, but you took what you had and took an idea, and, and four years later, you're, you know, you're doing this, sponsoring people, you know, doing stuff in the community. Uh, that's the thing I kind of wanted to, to, to ask about. How's it like uh, being in the community? Oh. It, the community around here is awesome. Uh, Randolph has been really well. Um, other towns, um, I do a lot of Marshfield, um, Situate. Um, oh, hence the sand. Yeah, that's the sand. <laughs> is the sand is the sand in Marshall different than the sand in Situate? I've always wondered. Is, 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 is Grainier. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I just again, I'm just pleased to be here today. Uh, one of the things we talked about is when you're watching this video, is I'm trying to kind of grow myself and, and, and connect with people via video. You can still hear the podcast on OscarMikeRadio.com. But um, I kind of wondered if we'd go back a little bit and talk about how we met. And we didn't we didn't meet, you know, this is not our first time meeting. We met at, uh, you know, Gosselin's uh, business when he was still had it. Yeah. And uh, that was a very good day. I set up and kind of did what I'm doing now a little bit differently. But I got to meet people like yourself and I just kind of want to know what you thought about all that back then actually you were the first podcast I ever heard about I never followed podcast until I you so uh, I think you're the only one I still follow so oh well, I, hey I mean that's great that's great I love that yeah it's kind of it's kind of weird doing this this podcast sometimes um, some people our age don't really listen to podcasts but I, I got people 10 15 years younger who are all over this the people our age want to see video, so that's why we're, we're doing the camera thing right now. But I just remember getting to talk with several veterans that day, several guys like Connor Sullivan and the Veterans Brotherhood MC telling me their stories, man, about, you know, some real challenges they faced. And I'm, I'm kind of curious, Mark, you know, what challenges do you think veterans face, you know, regardless of their status? You know, what's, what's like the biggest thing that you think, you know, our community faces? The VA. Really? <laughs> that's, I think that's our biggest challenge. So why is that? Because every time I talk to somebody in the VA, they're like, no, we're improving, we're trying real hard. They are. They, The, the people above them uh, believe it's their money or something. I don't know. Well, it's not, it's not their money. <laughs> I know. but I, 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 That's how I think they think. It's because they fight us on everything. <laughs> and that just that just is, uh, you know, baffles me because you're not the first person who says, says that. Yeah, a lot of people think now that, uh, if, if I understand correctly, President Trump made it to where a guy like you and me could go to our private primary care and get taken care of instead of having to go to the VA. Do you think that's a big deal? Uh, it, it is. Uh, I use the VA only, though I don't have a primary care outside of the VA. Um, and very rarely do I go to them because I just keep on going. You know? yeah. I, I'm not a doctor fan. Hey man, no, dude. Uh, well, I, that's a different conversation for a different time. I don't want the nurses yelling at me, no, I know. but I hate shots and I hate going to the doctor. And well, anyway, um, so the VA and, and the people who are, you know, managing how the funds flow into the veterans. Yeah, they they really should do more for veterans, I think. But 
you know, that's just a whole different topic of discussion. No, just curious, just curious, because there's a lot of guys who tell me there's a lot of frustration. They sit down, their hand, you know, a stack full of forms, and you know, it's still not enough. It's still not enough. And if you get one, uh, I've been told stories where if you get one entry wrong on a form, it, sorry. it's denied. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to refight it and go back. And, and it just seems weird to me. It just seems weird to me. So the VA stuff. Well, I am just excited to be here. First of all, my motorcycle looks better than anything I could have done to it ever. And I was real proud of myself sometimes, Mark, clean. I thought, you know, you did a pretty good job on that, Travis. You did a pretty good job on that eight hours later. And, and folks, I, I'm watching him, you know, do this. And this is my motorcycle behind me. And literally an hour and 15 minutes, I'm sitting there with my jaw like, because my bike has been, it has been reborn. It is truly reaperfied. And I want you to remember that because I just think this is an exciting um, you know, thing to be involved with. Speaking of involvement, man, we started talking like, you know, three or four months ago. And we, we, we got to know each other. And it's, it's my understanding that you want to support the podcast as a sponsor. I do. So I'm... I'm Please to say, I'm proud to say, like Joyce Asak of Asak Realty, who sponsors the podcast, you will start seeing the, the Reaper logo attached to the Oscar Mike Radio um, website, Facebook page, and everything. I, I am just, I'm really humbled that, that Mark would want to attach uh, the Reaper name and his name to what I'm trying to do for veterans. Well, you, you do a lot, you know, you, you do a lot for veterans, and I, I always try to support everything that, you know, for, like even if there's other veteran businesses you want to post it on my wall I'm good with that you know I've asked people before just hey if you're a veteran business post it because we try to keep the veteran community alive more and, and you do a lot for veterans and that's why I'd love to just sponsor it because you do a lot well I, I appreciate that um, you know it's, it's a passion of mine and you know I, I would ask everybody watching this video you got a choice of where to get your car cleaned you take it to the car wash yourself or the, the, the people who, who clean your car after the car wash, or you can get on Facebook, go to Reaper Detailing, and he can come to you. Like if I had a water source near me today, and you know I was just a Joe Blow, nobody, or somebody, uh, Mark would literally get in his vehicle, come do my bike, do my car, do my house, do my child, do my playground, you know, uh, equipment, and get it clean. You you can you can support somebody you don't know or support a veteran who's going to put his money and effort back in the community. And Mark, it's just uh, great to humble that you'd support me like this. So um, last question on this, which is the most important question of all. It's not about the podcast. It's, it's not about your business. Well, not that your business is not important. But when are we going to go riding? Anytime you want. <laughs> oh, not only are we going to go riding, we're going to go fishing too. Yep. Mark's a fisherman, folks, and uh, he just gave me some good scoop on some good places to fish. Awesome, awesome. So we are going to do a um, cleanup thing, I think, too. I think next year in the spring we're going to. Oh, really? Yeah, I think I want to host a, uh, one, I want to host a fishing derby. Really? And two, I want to um, host a cleanup day around uh, a local park once a month. Fishing derby. So, so again, this is about you giving back. You have people coming to support your business. You're now able to do things like, you know, clean up around the park that you enjoy going to so much to fish and then do the fishing derby. Now, what will the fishing derby be about? Um, I want, I, I mean, it's going to be open to everybody, right. um, but I'm definitely going to put it out there for like disabled veterans and stuff like that. Uh, we'll have, I've, I've seen a couple of places where they're actually wheelchair accessible to go fishing. Really? Yep. So, uh, it, you know, it's just easier to, you know, if it's able to just get out there and enjoy Mother Nature, you know. Awesome, awesome. Well, I am looking forward to it, as we discussed before. I'm looking forward to being a part of all this and, and being there at these events and, and, and seeing you grow and, and make change in the community. Mark, this has been awesome. Any, any tips for people who are on the fence about trying to do auto detailing or house clean themselves? versus having you come out and do it? Um, no, we don't We, we don't discourage anybody. Like, a good friend of mine who's also a detailer, uh, 
says, you know, as a million cars on the road, we're not going to fight over it at all. You know, we, we just don't do that. But anyways, if you're going to go clean your own, uh, just take your time, go slow. Um, house cleaning is a whole, you have to have the whole setup to do that. And it gets dangerous and takes a while. Look, I'm going to tell people, look, um, I could do my motorcycle myself and I have for many, many years. It's worth it to have the professional do it. Yeah. I'm the rookie <laughs> professional. It's, it's fine. Like, even if like people want to maintain their cars and bring it to a car wash, that's, that's, that's absolutely fine. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to have it done by us every month, but, um, I do recommend, uh, three times a year. And also if you did want me to come out, um, we do offer a maintenance plan for cars. So husbands trying to get your wife's car clean or wives trying to get your husband off your, you know, tail about your car. Problem solved. That's right. We come out every, uh, we do it the first initial time and then uh, we see the two or three months we'll come out and do it again. There you go. There you go. So you have no excuse. There's no reason why not to get reaperfied. Mark, it's just, uh, I'm looking forward to the future with you. Uh, I'm very happy with my motorcycle. Um, you can find out more on Mark's Facebook page. There'll be links in the blog post for the Oscar Mike Radio Facebook page. And you'll start seeing the Reaper logo everywhere on what I'm doing. Mark, again, a pleasure and honor. And um, I just can't wait to see what the future has. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, this is number 163 closing down on a nice uh, Labor Day weekend. Thanks, everybody. Thank you again, Mark. We are out.